I'm currently sitting at what was formerly known as Bagley Park. Bagley Park was once a thriving, affluent African-American community, and the subdivision was created by developer John Owens in 1921 and was a buzzing and lively neighborhood for many black Americans. Now, just to give you a little insight into the racial undertones of the park's existence and the name change, it's really helpful to know that the name Bagley Park actually comes from William Bagley, who was Elon Osby's grandfather. Now, Elon mentioned that her family had settled in this area after being ran out of Forsyth County in approximately 1912. And according to old security notes that date back all the way to 1928, her grandfather purchased six lots in the subdivision for a total sum of 2100. Now, William Bagley was so influential in his community for his business and his entrepreneurship that he actually was known as the unofficial mayor around the town. Um. You know, I, 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 some of the things I didn't even learn them from my mother. I learned them from some, some people, you know, who like books lived. Like. Well, no, these were people who lived oh. in Bagley Park. And um, originally it was Macedonia Park. And I don't know how long it was before they started to call it Bagley Park or how it actually you know, God, was no longer Macedonia Park. <laughs> now it's it's Bagley Park. Somebody woke up one morning and said, "Okay, let's it let's be this." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know what what transpired. You know, for that to happen, but um, this uh, lady told me that my grandfather was. She said, like the mayor of Bagley Park. So she told me, you know, she said, she said your grandfather was like the mayor of Bagley Park. And I said, well, how did that happen? And she said, because of who he was. And so he apparently um, just, you know, had this presence about himself. He was a leader there. Um, she, she said, you know, if you wanted to do something, you, you went and you talked to, to Mr. Bagley about it. So this is the only picture that anybody has had of him. They lived a really good life. Yeah, you know? I was just about to ask about that because I know they owned a store in the area. Yeah, where they, they, my, my grandfather, um, you know, his stature in the community, um, he was, was a very um, genius kind of person. They, my, remember my mother telling me up um, in sort of in the heart of Buckhead at Peachtree and West Paces Ferry there was this big huge tree and the soldiers that's where they would come through Atlanta and they would rest their horses there and they would feed the horses corn mm -hmm. and so there were all these corn kernels out there and my grandfather would go up there and collect all of this corn and bring it back and share it with the community. With the community. Yeah. Oh, wow. Now he was a shoe cobbler um, I don't know if he did that in Forsyth County or it was Bagley Park or where, but he was a shoe cobbler somewhere. And um, and somebody told me that he had a store, but I'm not sure if they were getting that mixed up with my father, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, you know, or, or he or had a store somewhere. Here. Yeah, yeah. But, but he he knew how to make money and did very well for himself. And then my parents, uh, you know, starting with this, this store, they took the money that they were paid for their property there and they came out here and, um, you know, they bought a lot of land here. Uh, my father uh, was one of the first blacks that was hired at Lockheed. And um, my mother had the first black licensed daycare in Georgia. In all of Georgia. In all of Georgia. Oh and and so they they did very well for themselves. And they did things back in the forties that that average black, you know, it's couples weren't doing. Of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, they traveled a whole lot. Mm -hmm. uh, when Joe Lewis had his last championship fight, 
in Madison Square Garden. My parents had uh, seats on the third row. You know, they just did very, very well, yeah, that, you know, for themselves. That's insane. Yeah. Well. Like, to go to a Joe Lewis fight and be up close and personal. To like, go to New York <laughs> and to have seats on the third row. That, that is something. Yeah, and I'd love to know a little bit about what your childhood was like growing up in the area. It was fun. It was, it was fun. Um, I, I think um, in this neighborhood and in those times, we're talking about uh, 1950, 51, 52, and up, people were, people were, the neighborhood was a neighborhood and you were part of their family too. You know, people just, they, they joined in and raising you. So, so everybody raised everybody's children and loved everybody's children. And one thing that I remember still to this day, it's, it's really fresh in my memory. On Christmas morning, there were like five or six different homes in this neighborhood that would call my mother and tell her to send me because they had a gift for me. And I would go around to these different houses, you know, and gathering up all of these wow. gifts and things, you know. Like coming, yeah, we would clean up. Like Santa Claus. We would clean up, you know, myself. And there's a, another young lady that lived right down here. And um, we were just, I guess, a favorite of, you know, people in the neighborhood. And they loved us and they let us know on Christmas. <laughs> they definitely <laughs> made a show of all yeah, the gifts. Yeah. <laughs> but it sounds like a lovely childhood and definitely good that you got to experience like that sort of communal aspect, yeah. even with people who weren't necessarily blood. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you guys all felt that sort of kinship. We did. Yeah. We definitely did. But in the 1940s, Ela and her parents moved all the way to the northwest area of Atlanta after the neighborhood was torn down for the creation of this very park. The park's creation was a part of a much larger plan in the mid 20th century to try to gradually eliminate black neighborhoods and wealthy residential areas in Atlanta. Fulton County purchased the land and slowly pushed out black residents from 1945 all the way to 1953. Now they did this through a few ways, either by negotiation, forced purchase, or even eviction. The racism part that continued, uh, their, the Ku Klux Klan would ride through Bagley Park. Um, they, they did a lot of things to intimidate the residents of this you know, settlement. And, um, and then in 1940, maybe around 46 or something like that, uh, they built a community or a subdivision sort of behind Bagley Park. And the, the white people that were moving into these new homes and everything, they decided that they didn't want, uh, you know, this black settlement behind them anymore. Even though they built this, this new subdivision and they had running water, they had sewer lines or whatever. The city would not do that for the people in Macedonia Park or Bagley Park. So they didn't have running water, they had wells, they didn't have a uh, connection to the sewer lines. And so the complaints, you know, that the white people had, uh, it was about the noise, it was about, uh, you know, the stench of you know, the results of not having a sewer line and all of that. Um, it, you know, that they decided they didn't want them there anymore. And so the city start, started to try to buy these people out. And they would offer them a certain amount of money, you know, for their land, and which was always below, you know, the market value, but they made an offer to them. If they didn't take that offer, then they would condemn the property and take it by uh, eminent domain. Mm -hmm. And so here is racism again, you know, happening. Mm -hmm. And so between the late 1940s up until about 1953, I think maybe that was the last uh, family, you know, that moved out, all of Macedonia Park, Bagley Park was gone. The city, um, told my 
parents and, and, and my aunts and uncles that they were going to name it Bagley Park. Uh, there was a street there mm -hmm. that was called Bagley Street and they actually put a sign out there that said Bagley Park wow. and they promised them that they would never change the name. After the park's construction, city officials named what was formerly known as Macedonia Park in honor of William Bagley. According to the Buckhead Heritage Society, city officials actually did the renaming offer to offer some sort of consolation for the stolen land. Yet much like many promises that were made to people of color in American history, this promise would eventually be broken too. In the early 1980s, the park was renamed to Frankie Allen Park after a popular baseball umpire who typically played over here. I was coming from Buckhead and just happened to ride through there and saw the sign was gone and changed. And I thought we were gonna lose my mother. She was just so yeah. upset, you know, about oh, this. Uh, but, but that was, I don't really have a, I don't really have a problem with them naming the park, Frankie Allen Park. It was about changing the name and you've promised that you're not. And that's why people need to be, be very careful about changing the names of buildings and streets and whatever like that because of what that person was involved in. Uh, it's our history, good, bad, or ugly. It's still our history, and it needs to stay. Yeah, it's it's very true because otherwise it's just sort of a, an all-around erasure. Mm -hmm. It is. It's sad to hear that the name was changed um, to Frankie Allen. Frankie Park. Allen, just mm -hmm. because it's it, once again another broken promise. Exactly. exactly. It's just like a history of you know black people who owned land or did anything great somehow it mm -hmm. ends up mm -hmm. being changed. I know you mentioned that they changed the name of the park. Is the community at all working? on any efforts to try and restore the original name or do you think that's possible? I don't. Okay. I don't think so. Are you aware who owns the area that was predominantly black? Um, like who's in charge of it and what's happening now? That's the city of Atlanta. So the city you now. Mm -hmm. That whole settlement, um, all of those homes and everything, it's included in the park. Got it. That in, in Frankie Allen Park and it's owned by the city of Atlanta. The forced removal of black Americans from Bagley Park, the construction of the park itself, and the renaming of the park all tie into America's long history of silencing black history, erasing black culture, and degrading black legacy, as well as reneging on historic promises. Many people think that the times of forced expulsion are long behind us, but actually, in some cities, they're at the highest rate they've ever been. However, now they just go under a new, not so pretty euphemism known as gentrification. Modern gentrification continues the same vicious and targeted cycles that harmed William Bagley, his family, and his neighborhood. So many cities across the country that have a high population of black residents also have an incredibly fast growing rate of gentrification. And Atlanta's one of them. In fact, Atlanta currently falls at number four on the list of the nation's highest gentrified cities, which gives you something to think about.